And I would say that's not what we do. We're somewhere in between the two. Mm-hmm. We carefully contract hotels throughout all the destinations we operate to and produce a brochure which features these hotels. One of the key things that we offer is flexibility. So whereas the traditional tour operating charter model is based around weekly or twice weekly flights to a given destination, which gives you options of sort of three, four, seven, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 14 nights, by actually um, uh, buying in flights off a variety of carriers on a demand basis, we can uh, put something together in a more bespoke way. If you've got a one, if you've got a one week holiday off, off, uh, off, off work, uh, you can, in this manner, you can fly out Saturday morning and come back Sunday night. You've maximized to the hour your week away, but you've actually had eight nights away by oh. offering it, it like that. Even though you're, you're more flexible than the traditional model, do you still protect customers' money in the same way? Yes, we do, definitely. Um, we are uh, governed by a regulator called the Civil Aviation Authority, and they impose incredibly strict financial controls uh, over tour operators, uh, quite rightly so. We're one of the few industries where people pay large sums of money up front and all they receive in return actually is a piece of paper and a promise. So we have what's known as an Atoll license, which totally protects any money that is paid to us. We're also a member of the Association of British Travel Agents, which is a, a sort of kite mark, if you like, or uh, a, a, of excellence. It's, a, it's a, a voluntary code of conduct that we adhere to. Uh, it, it covers uh, clauses and conditions in brochures. They also offer a mediation service on the rare occasions when things go, go wrong. Um, we think it's a club we need to belong to. Uh, uh, a member of the International uh, Air Transport Association, uh, the body that, that governs uh, scheduled air uh, flying. So there's quite a lot there to protect the customer. It's good to hear. <laughs> Absolutely. I think all too often there's an assumption made that provided people pay on a credit card, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I know what the Consumer Credit Act uh, uh, covers, but the fact is it doesn't actually cover the broken dream. After a while, you may well get your money back, probably after a considerable fight. Mm -hmm. But when when someone's buying a holiday, you know, for, for many, many, many people, the most important thing that happens in the year, why take a chance? Book it with a proper travel agent, and the travel agent will ensure that he's booking this holiday with a fully bonded operator. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do agree with you. <laughs> uh, you've mentioned travel agent a few times. Does that mean you can be your holidays can be booked through travel agents or are you direct booking only? No, 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 no. Uh, I would say about nearly 90% of our holidays are sold through travel agents. Um, that's the way it's always been, and I can't see any reason why that would ever change. There will always be a very small number of people who want to seek you out, sit in front of you and look between... Look between, look at your eyes to see who they're actually paying their money to. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there'll always be a small number of people like that. It's uh, just a habit. But but uh, all our promotional activity is actually aimed towards the travel agent community. To be honest with you, it's a very cost-effective way of doing business. Cost-effective, so the customer saves anyway, don't they? So. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, there is a big myth. Uh, well, I think it's a myth anyway that by cutting out a travel agent, you can save money. And it is just that, a myth. Mm -hmm. It's the travel agent who knows where to go to get the best value. And I use the word best value because I I dislike the term cheap. Um, And it costs no more. (laughs) There are all sorts of horror stories around of people who have been ripped off by uh, consumer-facing websites because they have assumed that, that it was cheaper. There's no evidence to show that at all. Mm-hmm. Not only have they booked something that, that they probably don't know much about and paid a price that they can't really relate to, assuming it's cheap, but sometimes they've actually booked something which gives them no protection at all. So uh, while you're talking about that, all these uh, stories I've seen on Facebook about people who have made mistakes with their holidays and the bookings and stuff. So yes, you do need to, uh, to use somebody like you to make sure you're protected fully. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I just cannot believe that people would take a chance. Most people, as I say, only get one holiday a year. Mm. Why on earth would you want to take a chance? By all means, do your own research. By all means, uh, use the uh, the travel agent's best friend and the travel the travel industry's worst enemy, TripAdvisor. Mm-hmm. It's worth having a read, 
But, you know, a cautionary tale on that, that can be manipulated. Sometimes someone has a, ba a bad experience in isolation and they post something rotten on there. Well, it doesn't mean that the thousands of other people who haven't been to a venue didn't have a great time. But again, travel agent would know that. Mm -hmm. You're listening to The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. I'm speaking to David Skillicorn, the General Manager at Prestige Holidays. It kind of escapes your notice that the pound has plummeted a little bit with all the stories about Marmite and whatever. And if you listened to the show a couple of weeks ago, you know that I mentioned that uh, some APTA members are looking or thinking about uh, increasing their prices, which they can do under their terms and conditions. It's something a lot of people get caught out on, but it only happens to you the once. But uh, I wanted to know whether Prestige Holidays were thinking about, or whether they already have, increase the price of somebody's holiday because of the way that the pound has plummeted since Brexit. Keeping with the financial protection aspects that you offer, the pound yes. has had more than a hiccup recently and some ABTA members do do surcharges if the currency falls. Have you had to uh, do any of that recently? No, not at all. This is a very, very big issue, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, without wishing to go down a whole different debate about Brexit, mm -hmm. the fact is the value of sterling has dropped against all other currencies. Now, tour operators, uh, responsible tour operators, uh, need to, we use the expression hedge. So you have, if you produce, you, you need to back up the prices that you put in your brochure and the prices that you're actually charging clients. And in our case, that involves a constant monitoring of how many euros we're holding, how many Canadian dollars we've got, American dollars, whatever the currency is. Mm -hmm. But that means we will adjust our prices as we go along. Um, so, if the, there's a, a, a huge spike in, in the pound next week, our prices to those people booking next week will be reduced. And if it goes the other way, our prices will increase. But if you've already booked, the mm -hmm. price at the bottom of your invoice is the price because we've already secured the, the various elements of currency in that holiday price. With the fall in the pound, is there anywhere in Europe that still offers good value? Yeah, I mean... Having said that the pound has dropped in value against the whole basket of currencies, and notably the euro and the, the dollar-denominated uh, uh, currencies, the one area that does stand out as still offering good value, and again, I'm emphasizing good value, I, I dislike the word cheap, mm -hmm. but is Croatia. And that's possibly because um, imported goods into Croatia for many, many years were always quite expensive. However, the locally grown equivalents, if you like, uh, r still remain good value. There are some things, I mean, it, it, the, 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 the currency there is the kuna, and the value of the pound against the kuna has also dropped. But it, the effect does not appear to have been as profound. So it seems a good place to go for value, but what is there to see and do there? The great thing about Croatia is that it is largely undiscovered, and let's be really, really honest, most of the destination place names are largely unpronounceable as well. Mm -hmm. But I would rather liken it to Greece of 30 years ago, where people would arrive in Athens, jump onto a ferry, and go to one of a myriad of islands. This is part of the attraction of Croatia. You can fly into Split, and there are regular ferries towards the, to the, the, the larger islands. What I'm saying is it, it offers many more holiday possibilities. A great number of our clients opt for a twin centre. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, say, fly to Split, they go to Bratch. Bratch is about, oh, barely an hour from Split by ferry. Maybe have 10, 10 days on Bratch, which is a really lovely, undiscovered, quiet retreat. And then come back to Split and maybe have two, three nights. It's very like uh, the images we see of Dubrovnik and Dubrovnik being the place name that most people conjure up when you say Croatia, but actually Split is well worth a look. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's the sheer variety. It's not great for sandy beaches, and we don't sell it for sandy beaches. Lots of beaches, but they tend to be pebbly. But the waters are absolutely blue, um, and depending on when you travel, you know, uh, you, you, don't, you're not, you don't find you're sitting uh, in rows and rows and rows of people um, uh, fighting for, 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 for a space on a beach. 
Yes, that's my idea of holiday hell, trying to find somewhere on a beach and being surrounded by loads and loads of people. Oh, it, it, it's, it's just ghastly, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I'm not a great beach person, personally, and mm. I tend to look and think, no. My idea of going on a beach is early in the morning and I walk along in the shallows of the water. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's good enough for me. The rest of my day I spend around the pool. But for some people it's very, very important. They're mm-hmm. looking for the all-over town and everything else that goes with it. Um, but again, as I say, Croatia's not big on sandy beaches, but plenty of, plenty of really lovely pebbled areas. The value of the pounds is not the only problem hitting the travel industry at the minute. There's problems in North Africa and Turkey. Have you been? You do offer Turkey as a destination. Have you been affected in any way? Well, yeah, we have. I mean, the, the, the problem is, to a lot, to a great extent, the, the tourist map has just got a lot smaller over the last two years. Mm-hmm. We we never had a large program to Turkey. It was always smaller, and I have to say, last year it got even smaller. Um, we've never been uh, in Egypt as a destination nor in Tunisia. Um, this has produced problems uh, elsewhere, however, because if you were to take all the people who would ordinarily have visited these destinations and try and reaccommodate them in Mallorca, in Croatia, in the Algarve, wherever, well, they, they just don't fit. So the, the, the spin-off on that side is there were huge, massive shortages of capacity when we got into high season this year. And I think the same will be the case for next year. So in the travel industry, we've always had the slogan, book early to avoid disappointment. Mm-hmm. But actually, it's more a case of book early if you want to have a holiday. This had a flashback to Ponting's adverts then. Fred Ponting yeah. saying book early. I'm showing my age, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we always, you know, the travel industry is very big on promotion. Mm-hmm. And uh, we always trotted these things out, obviously because we always wanted early bookings because it's easier to plan if you get them. But the reality now is not only is the capacity available earlier, but actually the best prices are available for the early bookers. Mm-hmm. You can follow me on Twitter at holiday underscore hut. So you're advising everybody to book early for next year. So what are the hot destinations they should be looking at? Well, it's interesting this because... We've never seen so many people book so early. But the one area that is standing out, uh, 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 really storming ahead, and it's taken us by surprise, believe it or not, is Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, it had a bit of a shot in the arm a few weeks ago because obviously there was a royal visit. Um, there's a 150th anniversary in 2017. Um, I just wonder whether maybe when people look around the tourist map and think, where can we go that is safe? And this is a big, big buzzword now, safe destinations. I think Canada seems to tick most boxes for people, or it would appear so mm-hmm. if I look at our own book- bookings. The 150th anniversary surprised me. I wrote about it for a travel trade magazine, Travel Bulletin, last month. Yes. And I had loads of people saying, it's older than that. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's not. But are you doing anything to help celebrate the uh, anniversary? Well... Obviously, in promotional terms, um, uh, uh, yes, a great deal more emphasis will be placed on Canada and the sheer variety. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's be honest, the, 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 the pound is weaker against the Canadian dollar, um, but uh, we're, we're emphasizing the diversity that Canada offers. If you want to go bear watching, this is the place to go. Um, there aren't many destinations that can trumpet that. No, there is an awful lot there. It, you need a lifetime of travel, I think, to get there. So you should have loads of repeat customers once they've been once. They'll be going back and back. It's what we call experiential travel, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing about this is it's almost on many people's bucket list. And if you're going to go, you need to do it properly. If you're going to go that distance, take the time to do it. You know, I think you need somewhere between two and three weeks, really, And that would only take you really on one side of it. I was lucky enough to go to British Columbia about two years ago Mm -hmm. and packed into eight days a huge number of experiences. I was absolutely exhausted when I got home. But the minute I landed at Heathrow, I thought, I've got to go back, but I will take three weeks to go and do all all that I've just done, but I'll do it properly. You mentioned being exhausted after doing that, all that in a short period of time. I'm a little bit tired at the moment, and you do spa holidays. What sort of spas would you recommend for somebody who needs to get away from it all? Okay, so I must be honest with you, I am not a massive personal fan of spas. That's Uh just a personal uh, personal taste. 
But I am surrounded by people who think they are fantastic and the, the best antidote for any sort of exhaustion. Uh, most, yeah, most of the hotels that we offer in and around the Med and the Canaries do have spas. Bearing in mind it's now November and it's pretty damn cold.